Hello, I'm Ron Strickland. This webcast is one of a series in which I'm providing some brief lectures and commentaries on topics from the courses I teach in literature and cultural studies. In this installment, I'll say some things about Geoffrey Chaucer and about his long poem, The Canterbury Tales. Geoffrey Chaucer was born sometime around 1340 in London, and he died in 1400. He was the son of a successful wine merchant, a member of a rising middle class that would steadily displace the aristocracy in economic power in England over the next 300 years. Chaucer's wife was a member of the lower aristocracy, and through her, he became connected to the highest levels of the English aristocracy when her sister married John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster. John of Gaunt was the son of King Edward III, the uncle of King Richard II, and the father of King Henry IV. So John of Gaunt was an influential member of the royal family, and Chaucer must have benefited from this connection. Chaucer was well-educated. He knew Italian and Latin, as well as speaking French and English, and he had a successful career in the service of John of Gaunt and as a government bureaucrat, eventually rising to become a, a member of parliament. And he also had a position controlling the customs of the wool trade for England. Chaucer's career, in effect, illustrates the changing power relations between economic power and military force in the 14th century in England. Medieval England, the period from around 700 of the Common Era to around 1500, was a feudal society with strictly hierarchical social power relations, characterized by a kind of a pyramid structure with lots of peasants at the bottom some merchants and craftsmen, civil service functionaries, and members of religious orders in the middle, and an elite group of knights, earls, dukes, and other aristocratic ranks at the very top. Feudal societies emphasized communal relationships among people rather than the individualism that we are familiar with in the modern era. Family networks were extended rather than nuclear members of families depended upon each other in multi-generational networks, and networks that included cousins and distant cousins and other kinfolks as part of the network. Although the social hierarchy was very rigid with little opportunity for social mobility, there were mutual reciprocal obligations between aristocratic lords and the peasants or serfs who worked on their lands. In terms of economic production, under feudalism, the economy was rather static, not very dynamic. The largest part of economic production consisted in subsistence agriculture, the production of food crops to be consumed by the local population rather than for export. In the towns and villages, there would be small craft shop industries, but no larger scale industrial production of the kind that would come later in the modern era. What international trade that existed consisted of luxury goods, such as jewelry, tapestries, spices, and so on, that were exchanged among members of the aristocratic classes of the different regions of Europe. But this feudal order was beginning to show signs of strain, especially economically, during Chaucer's lifetime. Chaucer lived during a somewhat tumultuous period in English history. England was ruled by three different monarchs in the latter half of the 14th century. Edward III, who ruled from 1327 to 1377, built a powerful military and started a 100 years war by claiming his birthright to rule lands that he felt he was entitled to in Northern France. Richard II, his grandson, was only 10 years old when his grandfather died and he became King of England. So in the first years of his reign, England was governed by a royal council. Nonetheless, England remained a force to be reckoned with in the ongoing 100 years war 
as well as in a series of border conflicts with Scotland, and the Crown also put down a serious peasants' rebellion in 1381. In 1399, the year before Chaucer died, Richard II was deposed in a military coup led by his cousin, Henry Bolingbroke, who became King Henry IV. The fact that there was a serious challenge to the regime in the form of a peasants' rebellion in 1381 itself marks a significant and distinctive historical shift from the power relations typical of earlier centuries in the Middle Ages. The peasants' revolt was provoked by the imposition of a poll tax, which was made necessary by the government's military adventures. Edward III and Richard II were militaristic rulers, and the country was constantly at war, but economic power was beginning to challenge military power as the shaping and dynamic force of English society. The 14th century saw substantial growth in market towns with craft guild shops, a robust international trade in wool. Another somewhat unexpected boost to the economy came in the form of the Black Plague, a devastating disease that is estimated to have killed as much as one half the population of Europe in the late 1340s and 1350s. I mentioned the plague as one factor boosting the economy because, ironically, after the death of so many people, there was more wealth, more resources to share among those who survived. These changing power relations, reflecting the rise of a merchant class and the decline of a class of warrior aristocrats, can be identified in both the content and the style of Chaucer's poetry, including the Canterbury Tales. With that, I'll conclude for now but in a subsequent webcast, I'll have more to say about the general background of Geoffrey Chaucer's life and times and his poem, The Canterbury Tales. As always, if you have questions or comments, send me an email. Mm -hmm.